like all success stories, um, it sort of seems simple in hindsight. Uh, but I think the key to it was that, that sort of practical get on and get it done sort of Australian approach to things, as well as a climate of goodwill towards Australia, towards the Australian community in Hong Kong, and what they were trying to achieve through the establishment of the school. It was an incredibly busy and interesting period. Uh, a great deal of international interest in the handover. And of course, uh, Australia's interest in Hong Kong was significant. Um, something like 30,000 Australian citizens, 350 Australian companies with uh, an operation of uh, some size in Hong Kong. The biggest uh, business group outside Australia and of course uh, the context of China's uh, rapid uh, industrialisation and uh, economic growth. I was the Australian Consul General in Hong Kong from 1992 to 95. That's just before the handover in 97. It was a very interesting and important time to be in Hong Kong where there are a lot of discussions going on about Hong Kong's future. It was um, a a time of great development. The Australian community was growing by leaps and bounds. From the 1980s onwards, the population of Australians in Hong Kong had grown into thousands. Uh, and there were a great many families that were moving between one place, and between Australia and Hong Kong and back again. And children going from Hong Kong to school in Australia or um, uh, having finished school in Australia, going back to Hong Kong to work there. Uh, so the community was really growing very fast. Uh, it was a great time to be there. It was also a very important time because there was quite a lot of uncertainty about what the future of Hong Kong was going to be after 97. Mm. You know, having a school with your country's name on it is a very significant thing. It, uh, you know, it reflects on the country and I'd never sort of thought of it in those terms. At, at the time there was, I think there was uh, something going on in Hong Kong where, where people were thinking about putting something together, but this was bringing it together in a much more of a structured way, bringing the, the Australian community together in, in looking at, at the, the concept of it and the reality of it and, and delivering it. So we really put together through the Chamber, through the Association and through the other constituent Australian organisations and the Australian Government to really look to, to bring it from a, a, a concept or a thought in, into reality. And then, you know, working with the, the Hong Kong Government, which at the time itself was, was looking through to transition through to 1997 and, uh, you know, eventually leading through to taking up uh, temporary premises in Hong Kong. I would have agreed, even at that point with Brian, that the school would become a very big school and it would be a very mixed school, it, uh, inclusive. And, and I think the inclusiveness for me was the most important thing. Um, a child-centred school, it was about the children, not the parents, not the staff, and, and not the other stakeholders. The children had to come first. And that was a vision that certainly I shared with, with Brian. Chris was a real driving force behind those early days of the school. The predominance of our school population was in the primary. And I think that's where we excelled. And Chris was able to build something from the very beginning, uh, wrap around the, the educational system and, and delivery, and I think bring to the school the, the, the caring nature of what Chris Nelson was all about. And she took us through and led, led us through to a very, very strong platform from which we could build from there. We started with very small numbers of students 
I remember turning up at the beginning of the, the new school and uh, um, I forget just how many students there were, I think there were about a dozen, you know. I mean, that it's also asking a lot of parents, you know, to make a decision to send their children to a new, an untried, untested school. Would you choose to send your children to something? You do, the future is all in front of you, you've got no past results to go by. So I think we also have to owe a big vote of thanks to those parents who made the decision that they would trust the school with the education of their children. The founding grandparents who were and still are essentially the owners of the school, um, uh, which are essentially the Australian community in Hong Kong, are the Consulate General, um, the uh, OSCHAM, the Australian Association, the Australian Chinese Association of Hong Kong and the Federation of uh, Alumni Associations. Um, and all of them have had a really active part and have played uh, uh, a fantastic role uh, and ongoing role in the development of the school and the support of the school. And uh, uh, particularly people like Cliff Sun during his presidency and all the other presidents uh, of the Chinese Association have been incredibly supportive with donations and uh, uh, setting up departments within the school and, and, and so on. At the time that the, the student numbers started to build, at the time the finances started to stabilise, we then went into lengthy discussions with the Hong Kong government for the possibility about getting some land. And again, the Australian government were very generous in their support of the then Consul General, a gentleman called Jeff Walsh. And uh, I distinctly recall, together with Jeff, and I think Phil was away or, or, or ill at the time, Jeff and I went to make a presentation to the Education Bureau and we were competing with about 10 other schools, very well established, developed a lot of history behind these other schools. And the outcome of that was that we were awarded the site at Kalantong. So I think once we were able to get through that, it, it then gave us some certainty. You know, we weren't going to be having to jump around in rented premises and, and the risk that goes with that. It is the dawn of a new era in the school's history and for the Australian community in Hong Kong. It is a great privilege and honour for me to stand with you all today, welcoming you to our celebration of the future. It's also a celebration of the past and a celebration of and for all of those dedicated people who have made this dream a reality. It is my hope that the spirit of today will live in on your memories and you will learn from this day to treasure your visions and dreams. They can become reality. I think uh, one of the, the times when really my heart was in my mouth was reading the results of the uh, HSC exams in the newspaper here. I hadn't heard from the school but I was just looking down the list of those students who had achieved top marks in various subjects. And there was, you know, our school, I hope I can say our school, you know, there as, as one of the top achieving schools of the whole of New South Wales. Then it seemed all worthwhile. That was a wonderful occasion. Sue McMillan uh, did the job that was asked. She took a school that was a local, a very good school and, and took it that next notch up into an international school and I think uh, she did a fantastic role in, uh, in doing that. I think that real sense of family is just the essence of the school and always has been and, and all credit to Chris and, and Margaret and, and the people before them, whoever they were, and the teachers um, for working with it and I guess that came from the fact that they had to work so hard with so limited resources that families actually grew the school, um, you know, with, with Chris and Margaret and others as the leaders. The war, Leonie Drew have, have done a tremendous job uh, at the school. Uh, Leonie's retirement is forthcoming, which is, is very, very sad. 
But they've uh, continued with the model in terms of the ethos and in, in the way that the school has run, uh, the, the qualities, the values and the vision. When we arrived, the school was just turning nine years of age and now it's turning 20. And you think, well, it's really grown up. We've, we've been there to guide the school and to steer it to pretty much adulthood. And that's, um, I think, where we stand today. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, based on all those years and all those people who came before us, but it's, 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 it's a quality, growing up product now, I think. We would hope, I'm sure, whatever age students leave the school, that they leave as well-rounded people who've got life skills. They can make decisions uh, as and when they need to in their older age. Um, they have the ability to work with other people and they are able to, I guess, be positive influences on the communities in which they go to. The young and the old also benefit from their contact in whatever form that might be on a daily basis. The young kids here, for instance, I think, are, um, despite their own um, positive values that they have, they actually have a very powerful influence on the older kids because they moderate their behaviour. They have examples of where... On the stairs. Yeah, well, not just on the stairs, but wherever there's an example where they've got to think twice because there's a young child here. You have to, you have to accommodate the needs of someone else, not just yourself. And teenagers are notoriously self-focused um, and uh, don't care about anybody else, but here they have to because it's the learning environment in which they work in. And uh, those circumstances are got to be positives for the student as they're growing older and, and being aware of the needs of other people around them. It always you know, blows me away how well the school ranks compared to Australian schools. And it's, um, it, it's a testament, I think, to really thorough teaching, early intervention in the early years, making sure that basics are really well grounded and um, and I think you know that it, it just shows the school kids will say to me it's cool to be smart at this school and that's good. Having been part of something that was just a pure concept to see what it is today I think it's very easy when people come in and they look at the building and they look at the grass and they look at the aquatic center and think wow that just happens overnight and, and it's a given uh, I think those who are involved in those very early days will, will tell you a very, very different story. Um, and I think it's also a journey to say and, and to share with people that, that, you know, if you're prepared to work hard, to have a group of people around you with the same vision, commitment, you, you can create something wonderful and great such as this. I mean, I'm proud to have been involved in the project. I, I feel it's an, been an incredible honour and privilege and it, it's certainly been one of the highlights of my personal life and I, I will never forget it. Um, but I think probably the, the highlight is the new school and having what we have now from what we had 20 years ago. Um, it's just unbelievable and I, I, well, I don't think I can say any more than that. The three words I would use to describe AISHK are probably abundant, community and international. Committed. Home. Community. Fun. Caring, because um, I think there is an element of care and I felt that when I was going through um, year 12 there was a lot of care. Caring. Kind. Welcoming. Home. Community spirit. We are I can say that big, it's like a big family. Family. Welcoming. Family. Home. It's a very safe place, mm. I think. Safe in the sense of um, emotional safety. Community based. Welcoming. Determined, I think. Um, determination was really important because there were a lot of obstacles and difficulties and, and things in the beginning. Happiness. Family. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I, I, I wouldn't say anything else. I mean, I, I think it really is one of the best international schools in Hong Kong and uh, I don't think we're second to anyone, quite frankly. Good mates. 
Good mates is two words. Ah, uh, mate. mates. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Solid. That's solid. Love it. Congratulations to the students, the teachers and the administrators of the Australian International School Hong Kong on the school's 20th anniversary. This school was created by our expat community in Hong Kong who wanted a school that brought the best of Australia to this region. To grow from 25 students to over 1100 in just 20 years is an extraordinary achievement. For 20 years you've encouraged Australian and international students to have a go, to do their best and to fulfil their potential. Your teaching is based on Australian curricula and that gives confidence to Australian families considering a move to Hong Kong. The Australian International School has a strong record of academic success and is a real source of pride for our expat community. So I wish the school an enjoyable 20th anniversary celebration and may you have many, many more successful years to come. <laughs>